It's that time again. The moment you all come together from different departments, industries, and countries across the globe. And with each time we all go above and beyond with more and more exciting topics and more and more enthusiastic people to broaden all our horizons in our area of business. And that's what the Supplier Community Initiative is all about. Bringing you together to unite, to share, to learn, and to give you a voice. That's why it's great to have you on board again today. But before we get started, a personal message from our community founders, Regina and Mario. Truly amazing. Ever since we have launched the supplier community in 2021, we have already made a lot of things happen. From numerous events such as supplier community and supplier info sessions, to the development of a membership initiative right through to the supplier forum. In short, we're moving full steam ahead. And after all, we still have a lot of plans. Enjoy the session. The entire supplier community team and all helping hands now wish you a joyful time at this event. Stay tuned. Good morning Europe, good afternoon to our Asian suppliers and a very warm welcome to all the other participants from wherever you connected today. We, that is Regina and myself Mario, we are very proud to be your host for today and we are very pleased that you take the time to join our second supplier community event for this year. Before I briefly introduce you to the agenda, Regina, may I ask you to give us a short you about the organizational topics. Sure, my pleasure. Hello again from my side. Uh, I'm happy to be back again. You all know we are recording the session. You all know you have a voice even if you're muted. Why are you muted? Because we have more than 1,200 registrations and we have prepared all the slides as a download and we have prepared even two downloads for you. Please take the possibility as shown on the slide to download the handouts and to ask your questions. We're watching the questions and allow us to answer your questions afterwards per email. At the end, we all, as always, we have a survey for you. We really appreciate that survey if you answer that because it's just two minutes promised. We tested it yesterday and it's so important for us whether we're doing the right thing. Oh, back to you, Mario. Okay, what may you expect? I would say 60 minutes, thrilling and very, very informative. And we have three very important persons of supply on with us on board and we will start today with Stefan. He is a member of our executive board and he will address in his keynote a glimpse into the near future to you. And he will be followed by two new colleagues, which is Brynja and Tim, and they focus on one, probably one of the most important topics of today, sustainability and decarbonization. And thereafter, you will see the one or the other of you, a very well-known face. It is Michael, and he will this day focus on demand and capacity management. And afterwards, it is a very, very big pleasure for us. We have a customer of us, a buy-side customer, as we say, it is Schneider Electric, and Together with Daniel, uh, Schneider Electric will focus on traceability. And then we will see um, Thomas. He is a vice president uh, for the SRM and portal applications. And Thomas will let you know about what we have in mind to broaden the, uh, our supplier community and what we will do as, let's say, a paradigm in order to complete it. And thereafter, we will give you an update on Catena X, which is as well a very, very hot topic. And last but not least, Regina will take over and let you know what we prepared for you, our supplier community, and uh, what we will do in the coming months. So, but enough of the preface. I would say let us start with the keynote, and therefore I would like to take over, to give over, to hand over. The stage is yours, Stefan. The stage belongs to you. 
Thank you very much, Mario. Thank you very much, Regina. So, uh, uh, hello, everybody. It's really a great pleasure to have again so many of you in this uh, supplier event. So, uh, today we are going to talk about a topic that impacts every one of us. Uh, is it in business or also private? It's about sustainability and our common responsibility to the younger generation. So, a few weeks ago, I saw a TV documentary about young people. And in the documentary, teenagers were asked about their future family planning. And uh, what really shocked me was uh, that many of the young students do not want to have children later in life. The reason is that they don't want to expose own children to the crisis, which are mainly driven by the global climate change. So, of course, we all know the 1.5 degree limit. We all know that cutting trees and burning oil uh, to an extent that we have been doing it since many, many decades now is a burden to the younger generation. And that's why it's our common responsibility to bring hope back to the young people. Due to the critical situation, the governments are tackling the issue now very seriously. So, one example is, for example, the ambition of the European Green Deal. Europe strives to be the first climate-neutral continent. And it's not only a vision anymore, but there are already many actions defined, for example, an industrial strategy, a battery strategy, and also a circular plastics alliance. But the European Green Deal is only one example. There are many other in initiatives going on in the, on the other continents, And that's uh, something that really gives all of us, I think, uh, a lot of hope. But what is at least as important is that also the large industrial enterprises have changed their climate strategy tremendously. If I think of the many meetings we have with our global customers, we are now seeing a very strong commitment towards sustainability. Um, but the question is, What are the core pillars of a solution concept for a sustainable industry? How can the ambitious uh, objectives can be achieved? Single companies, even if they are large enterprises, have only limited capabilities to make really a difference. And we must be aware that we cannot respond to new challenges with the old solution approaches. And the new solution approaches we discuss with our large customers is based on two main Pillars. The first one is the ecosystem, and the second one is the digital twin. As some of you might not be so familiar with these two terms, we will explain them briefly in a video. Hi, Yuna. In order to get a better understanding of the whole topic, I have a few questions. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. So, what exactly does ecosystem mean in the business world and why is it so important? Well, um, if we think of ecosystems in nature, different species depend on each other to survive. In a similar way, in a supply chain, different players from raw material suppliers to manufacturers to distributors depend on each other to function smoothly. If one player drops the ball, the entire team suffers. Finally, it is important to realize that the issues we want to tackle in the future can only be done by working close and connected with each other, like an ecosystem. Ah, I see. And what is the basis for the ecosystem? It's called a digital twin. To get a better understanding of the concept, I have a simple example, our own mobile phone. It's kind of a digital twin of us. It usually knows pretty much everything, uh, where we have been with whom, who our friends are, what our interests are, how our health condition is, and so on. So a digital twin is a copy of objects from the real world. In a practical example from the global economy, An electric car consists of thousands of parts. The vision and mission is to have a digital copy of each individual car, including all parts with their attributes of 
all sub-suppliers. Because with this data, completely new opportunities come up. For instance, recall actions. Um, there would never again be a need for unnecessary large-scale recall actions because even if a component has a defect, we know where and when it was produced, by whom and which cars these parts are assembled. Wow, interesting. But when you talk about opportunities, what's the point of all of this? Yeah, there are many advantages, but two that stand out are sustainability and supply chain resilience. Sustainability means using resources wisely and minimizing waste. By optimizing supply chains with digital twins, we can reduce waste, use less energy and improve efficiency since we know at any time which parts are assembled where, um, what their properties are and how they can be reused. We can also design products with the circular economy in mind, which means finding ways to reuse or repurpose materials instead of throwing them away. For example, electric car batteries can be repurposed as energy storage devices for homes or businesses. This helps not only to protect the environment, but for sure also to save money. Yeah, that's great. You also mentioned supply chain resilience. What is meant by that? Supply chain resilience means being able to uh, deal with interruptions and bounce back from them. In supply chains, it is important to be able to adapt uh, to unexpected events like natural disasters, pandemics or something on a regular basis, uh, sudden shifts in demand. Within digital ecosystems, we can identify potential problems and find solutions before they harm the production. For instance, Within an ecosystem, we can simulate how to deal with a shortage of a particular material or how to reroute a shipment in case of a natural disaster. At the end of the day, well, we are no longer talking about interruptions, but only about manageable changes in planning. Wow, thank you for explaining that. It's fascinating to see how technology can help Businesses become more sustainable and resilient. Now we have heard what the two core pillars, ecosystem and digital twin, are about. But what does it mean for you in reality? Let me explain briefly. So every OEM has its own supply chain network. This network includes all its business partners down to the raw material suppliers. And today, many different collaboration solutions are in place to manage these individual networks. As a consequence, you as a supplier are forced to use many of these individual applications and many of these individual portals which are not uh, interconnected. So, uh, and if you look deeper into the supply chain, we see that many of the lower tier suppliers are even not integrated in the electronic data exchange. So the first innovation we are presenting today is about connecting the different ecosystems. This approach is also named network of networks. So some of you might know Catena X already. In the Catena X consortia, 28 companies, including Sublion, are developing standards to connect the different ecosystems to one large integrated network of networks. And the aim of this approach is to achieve the following improvements for you as suppliers. So firstly, if you are already registered at Sublion, you can use your account to log in to other ecosystems which are Catena X compliant via single sign on. So the second improvement is that we are going to support, of course, the new standards for the data exchange, for example, for sustainability use cases. And we are also fully committed to support the Catena EDC connector. And the third element is that we will extend our App Store. So maybe some of you know that we don't have only supply on applications integrated in our supply on portal. We also have partner applications integrated. 
and we will extend this approach, for example, for sustainability solutions or, or CO2 calculators and so on, and that bring also more value to our community. Our second innovation is a digital twin. In order to build the digital twin of complete products, we must first open our business network. For this purpose, we will expand our portal with two new registration options. The concept you are familiar with is that your customers invite you to share data via supply on. And during this year, we will also add a self-registration uh, process. But what is maybe more important for you is that you as a supplier will have the option to invite also your customers for dedicated business processes. And with these portal extensions, each company in the ecosystem can now create its parts of the digital twins and can connect its own parts to the parts of business partners. And at the end, we will have a completely connected part chain, which at the end will represent the whole digital twin of the complete product. And this digital twin can be used for several use cases. Uh, one use case is, for example, the confirmation of conformity. The so-called COC process is a very inefficient paper-based process within the aerospace industry. And with the digital twin approach, we can completely digitize this process, we'll, which, will be, uh, which will save a lot of effort uh, within the whole supply chain. Another example could be the PCF calculation. So uh, it will be very easy possible that each uh, supplier in the supply chain can attach CO2 data to the digital twin in order to optimize the product carbon footprint of the complete product. So let me summarize. In the past, we clearly had our focus on efficient, resilient and transparent supply chains, and mainly also with a single tier focus. But we all together have a very big responsibility towards the younger generation. And that's why we at SupplyOn made sustainability to our fourth pillar of our vision and mission. And that's why our, we at SupplyOn are investing heavily in the open ecosystem in order to connect the different systems that are available in the market. And the whole supply on team is very much looking forward to walking the path to climate neutrality together with you. So please enjoy the following presentations, which will provide further insights into our strategy. And many thanks for listening. Many thanks for spending your time with us. Thank you very much, Stefan. It was a very, very informative keynote you brought to our audience. And therefore, maybe in one single sentence, what is the key message you would like to address to our audience? Well, I think um, it doesn't matter if you talk about small projects or huge global challenges. I think the key point is really making the first step. And it should be done today or tomorrow. So don't wait. Everybody of us is, has a responsibility towards the younger generation. This is a good, clear message. Thank you very much. And we will make it concrete because I would like to bring our next two guests. Thank you very much once more, Stefan. It shows to our... Uh, audience as well, the importance what we focus on these on, on these topics. So we have the first topic of today, and as I already mentioned, that uh, PCF and CCF is a very important topic. I would like to hand over to you. The bird is yours, and please tell our audience what you have in mind, what the plan is doing in order to enable the community in working with these two things. Okay, thank you, Mario. Thank you, Stefan, as well. So, uh, hello from our side as well. Um, as Stefan has already said, sustainability and decarbonization is extremely important. And we both would like to tell you now, again, really short, why sustainability and decarbonization matter, how you as supplier can contribute, and last but not least, what we as supply on do to support you and our customers in order to reach the different goals. So with that, maybe Brunia, can you just briefly tell us why sustainability is that important? Yeah. So yeah, as Tim mentioned, why sustainability and decarbonization matter? Well, to limit global warming to 1.5 as degrees, as Stefan mentioned, climate goals 
regulations and policies have been put in place within the EU, as well as all around the globe, as we are aware of. So when moving forward, we can see there are regulations coming in a continuous basis. Uh, so that means for manufacturing suppliers, you, um, you need to comply with these regulations to avoid, for example, penalties. So, but if we look at the picture here that we have um, to the left, some of you may already have seen it, if not a lot of you. It was presented in one of the previous supplier community events in the past um, by Scheffler, one of our customer and shareholder. And it so nicely illustrates that um, compensation alone, unfortunately, is not sufficient. So that, that means we need to look into decarbonization as well. And so how you suppliers can actually contribute to that, Tim will go a little bit more into depth about that. Yeah, thank you, Brunia. <laughs> so it's always the question, so how really can we as a supplier contribute to sustainability and decarbonization? And I think looking at where the emissions come from, uh, that becomes clear and obvious uh, how you can contribute. Because roughly 80% is scope 3 emissions or are scope 3 emissions, which are not really um, yeah, in the full control of the company. So um, therefore, it's really, really important to look into the entire supply chain to see where the uh, biggest part of the emissions come from and identify potential for reduction and decarbonization as uh, Stefan said really to uh, give the younger generations a future. And I think, as we said earlier, we as Supply On support you and our customers with that. And yeah, Brunia, can you maybe tell us uh, what Supply On does about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to tell a little bit like what Supply On has to offer in order to contribute to that. So we have two solutions. Uh, first off is the Corporate Carbon Footprint Survey. And secondly, is the product carbon footprint data exchange tool. So to go a little bit more into the first one, that is the corporate carbon footprint survey. It's actually a survey that uh, your buyers will be sending out to you. And in the future, you can actually send it to your suppliers. But now you may ask like, okay, why shall I answer it? Why shall I submit it? Like, what do I gain from it? So to begin with, um, the corporate carbon footprint survey, actually provides this structured way of getting your CCF data, um, climate strategy, renewable shares, uh, and more information all in one place. So that means once you have submitted the survey, all the information gets saved in Suppliance uh, Business Directory. So it's going to be accessible for you and your buyers. And maybe it's nice to mention, you only need to answer the survey once, once a year. So even if you have more than one buyer, two, three, and et cetera, and et cetera, you only need to answer it once and it's gonna be accessible to all of them. So that's quite convenient. But as has been mentioned before, a lot of companies, buyers, out in the world, all around the globe, they are looking at reducing their carbon footprint so when they go into sourcing, it's going to be one of the pillars they're going to look into. Hence, it's quite important that you answer this to show them um, that, yeah, that you are able to comply with their standards and that you are com compatible to their standards. And not only that, it's also to, take, to show them that you're taking actions into being more sustainable. And it will definitely give you a competitive advantage and show that you're strong on the market. Um, but as Stefan mentioned, before and one of his um, key messages, like even if you haven't started with the strategy or you haven't calculated your CCF, it's definitely uh, a kind then and an important message from our side then to start today. But Tim will go more into the, the PCF to explain like the second solution. Yeah, happy to do that as PCF stands for Product Carbon Footprint. Um, and here we newly have a product carbon footprint tool or product carbon footprint uh, app for exchanging uh, carbon footprint data on product level. And as Brunia already said, sharing data on carbon footprint and sustainability currently is and will be even more important and get into competitive advantages. 
And this product footprint app gives you the possibility to share your data on product level with every customer or even uh, along the supply chain, talking about the ecosystem that Stefan mentioned earlier on. So um, we won't go into that much detail today because we have a lot of other different uh, topics that we would like to cover in this supplier community event. But if you're interested in further talks on the corporate carbon footprint or the product carbon footprint, so please leave your email address uh, in the chat right now so that we will have the possibility to talk to you afterwards. Thank you and have fun in the rest of the supplier community event and back to Regina. Yeah, thank you, Brynja. Thank you, Tim. Very important message as we have only one world as we have Mikros aus. Hab's nicht ausgemacht. As we only have one <laughs> world, if you wonder, uh, I had a micro problem. Um, it's very important to contribute, and it is now your turn to contribute on that. And thank you for these interesting information. Thank you. Thanks thank you for, for being here. Thanks for having you. Now, let's continue and let's talk about the supply chain resilience. You heard that in the interview. And therefore, I welcome, as we already mentioned, Michael. And what are you telling us about the supply chain resilience today? And would you tell us which customers are using that already? Yes, of course. Okay. I will tell you a little bit about demand and capacity management. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Regina. So, hello, everybody. Warm welcome also from my side. Um, let me quickly move to the next slide. So, um, among the various trends that have been mentioned before, demand and capacity management is a hot topic throughout various industries. The pandemic has shown in a dramatic way how easily supply chains can be interrupted. And it has emphasized once again the importance of resilient supply chains. So the key questions are, how can demand and capacity management help to make our supply chains more resilient? And how can our solution support this? And especially, and that's very important for us, how can we make this whole process as easy as possible for the customers, but especially for you, for the suppliers, which in the end need to use this tool. So in the slide, you can already see a first glimpse of our application. It is a productive system. It is already in use for some customers like Bosch, Scheffler, many more to come. So some of you might already know this. For the ones who don't know it, um, it is a tool um, which is really easy to use. And what's also important for us, it is a flexible tool which should fulfill the needs of very heterogeneous suppliers. And in the end, we want to make this process of recording production capacities as easy as possible for you. So um, what you can see, see here in this slide, it's a, a few more advantages. So what we want to ensure is a focused bottleneck management system. So um, we want to highlight not all alerts, not all potential bottlenecks, but we want to focus on the most critical cases. So in this way, you can solve what really matters in your supply chain. Additionally, um, we are offering integrated collaboration solutions. So we do not just want to monitor alerts, which yeah might not be too critical, but we want to help you to directly start an exchange with your customer. And also the other way around, the customer will be able to directly contact you. So the solution should help to actually solve the problems and not just highlight or monitor the problems. So as you can see, we already have a quite powerful solution, but this is not the end. We are always challenging ourselves and especially we are asking ourselves how can we make the solution even more attractive for you. So we are not just looking at the needs of our customers, but we really want to get the opinion of the suppliers because you are more or less forced to enter your data there. So we, on the one hand, want to make this process as easy as possible for you, 
but we also want to bring a real benefit to you. And what you see here is one of our concepts. Of course, we are working on various concepts to further develop the solution. But here, for example, we, we are working on a concept that you can actually plan your capacity data. You can simulate your capacity data and you can play a little bit around with the demand uh, figures. You can play a little bit around with your capacities. You can distribute the capacities to your customer. So in this way, we offer an actual planning tool for you, which from my perspective makes the solution way more attractive for you. So if you're interested, of course, the time was quite limited now, but if you're interested to get some more details about this solution, again, feel free to paste your name and your email in the chat and we will get in touch with you. Thank you. Stay with me because it was <laughs> a real hot topic. And to be honest, I like your presentation. Very professional. <laughs> so second time here, I, I, can't, yeah, I, I can't say how much I like it. <laughs> um, we will go ahead. Thank you very much for the pre presentation about the demand capacity. We will go ahead with the next second top uh, you. hot topic, which is about traceability. And therefore, we will start with a short video, which of our customers, Schneider Electric, Malik, sent to us, because I think usage is always key. And it is definitely as well a very, very modern topic. And uh, before... Daniel will take it over. Let us start with the video and what Malik would like to address to you. Hi, my name is uh, Malik Harjima, working as a senior GM uh, for Schneider Electric since 2011 in Global Supply Quality Function. Today I am here to speak one of the key developments which we did with supplier. We had a request from our key customers to have the predictive quality approach on critical parts which we buy from our external suppliers along with the historical performance traceability. Currently, we had several individual applications which support us for part quantity data, upstream and downstream supply chain data along with the spider internal transactions. To meet our customer expectation, our management decided to develop Schneider Supply Portal, which helps us to digitize our several interactions and transactions at Schneider with our suppliers in one platform. One of the critical topics is parts traceability and supplier quality process monitoring. Supplier doing most of our interactions and transactions with our suppliers digitally, thus we approached them to find the solution. They presented their current standard solution, which were not reaching our 100% expectation, so we requested to customize as per our specification, which they agreed to do and develop in a very faster way. Currently, we are in the pilot of the solution and our dream of the solution is that the suppliers can visualize their lot-to-lot -lot variations of the process quality, critical parameters, along with the clear traceability. This also helps us to provide our customers for expected quality data information of the parts very fast digitally. We are also linking the same traceability ID or information with our finished product. This helps us to estimate containment actions in a faster way, potential impact risk analysis and faster resolution to our customers. We feel it's a unique portal where you can find quantity data of the part, like CTQ and CTP parameters of lot to lot control variations, and procurement data like PO information and the lead time information, and also the supply chain data like forecast, order acceptance, invoice, GRN information in one part, in one portal at every flow level. We are very happy and eager to launch this solution with all of our critical suppliers at the earliest with the support of supply and team. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Malik. I know you are in the audience. Thank you very much for this great statement. And I would like to hand over to Daniel, as I forgot to, um, yeah, to tell actually that he is as well a vice president for transport management and uh, the visibility and analytics solutions at Supplion. And therefore, the stage is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mario. And thank you, Malik, for the nice introduction of the tool uh, that we support here for Schneider Electric. So let me briefly 
uh, walk you through the key capabilities of our product here, which we call parts traceability. So parts traceability is a very flexible solution that allows our customers and the suppliers to collaborate together on different aspects that we nowadays call twin-related data within the supply chain. So we support the collaboration of material inspections, so customers can describe what they expect from the suppliers to be delivered to them. Suppliers can enter measurements, they can provide document uploads, they can provide various attachments that the customers ask for and really share this with the customers in a machine-readable form. And this, of course, allows also for further use cases like predictive analytics, preventive information, alerting to all sides. And the real benefits of the solution are that we can avoid handling or reverse handling aspects of defective components in the supply chain. So we can save costs more or less on both sides here for reverse handling processes. We can preventively alert customers about malfunctions or maybe defective components and really also here save quality related costs in the supply chain. And of course, we can also long-term persist the data that was collected more or less as a digital twin here to allow really for later on recall uh, purposes or let's say steering traceability use cases throughout the supply chain. So with that being said, let me quickly show you the tool live. First of all, I'm showing here the customer perspective. So the customer that wants to collaborate with the suppliers, they can use this tool to interactively create so-called templates here. And these templates describe what they expect the suppliers to provide in terms of production batch and traceability information. So let me open a predefined template that I just created here. Let's say this is for a component for an ECU-like component uh, where we need certain measurement data and quality-related data. So the customer can describe here for which part here he wants to have data, for which supplier, for which customer plant, they can ask for additional information to be provided and they can, of course, also set up a collaboration team of people that need to be informed about the quality aspects of a certain traceability effect here. And here below you see in this inspection section here the various information points the customer is expecting here from the suppliers to be provided, like, for example, certain dimension validations, functional tests uh, to be done, optical verifications. So all of this can be freely defined by the customers within this template definition. They can also ask for templates, uh, attachments to be provided here, like, for example, certain declarations for conformity or test logs or pictures or uh, things like that. So that's how our customer can define this information rather simply and interactively. On the supplier side, it looks similar. So actually, the supplier, when they, or let me just go back here, when the supplier looks into the tool, they see all the defined templates for him, where his customers are expecting certain quality and traceability aspects to be provided. So they see the various defined uh, inspections that are here foreseen. They can easily then interactively provide the data. They can upload it or machine to machine integrate with our system to provide this in a very easy way. So let me show how this looks like from a supplier perspective. So the supplier opens here the traceability template. And within that, he sees the predefined information that he's asked for. So he sees, okay, I need to provide data for this ECU uh, and this revision number, for example. Uh, he knows who is collaborating with, who is informed about any deviations or alert situations, for example. And then he sees, for example, the inspections that he has to do, like the measurements that he has to provide. And let me open one. So this is how the measurement data would be provided in an interactive way, but of course also as an upload or as an API integration. And so quality data and additional attached documentation can be easily shared in the supply chain between all the related parties. It can be used for quality, traceability, and a lot of other use cases as a digital twin going forward. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. Wow, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> you and your team are always having these interesting things. So we heard already a lot about the digital twin now and what comes up for the suppliers. Very interesting, and I think it avoids a lot of emails, calls, and silly right. uh, manual communication. And especially lots of paper documentation. Yes, so. correct, correct. Thank you for that. Wow. Okay, thanks for welcoming me here. <laughs> yeah. Magst du den? Okay. Now, let me introduce the next participant. And that is... Thomas, thank you very much, Thomas, for joining us. And I'm very excited what you are telling us about the ecosystem. We heard about that in the interview. Exactly. 
your stage. Thank you, Regina. And also a warm welcome from my side. So we have heard a lot of interesting use cases today, but the question is, what does this mean in general for the way how you collaborate with your business partners? To analyze that, let's have first a look of what we all know about the processes which you are using today. So this is what we call the single tier processes. Example is a customer request sends you a norm and requests you to confirm. Or a customer sends you a purchase order and requests you to confirm and afterwards send a kind of a shipping notification. Overall, for these use cases, the intention is to secure the production supply. And all of these use cases in general follow a standard process which is established in the industry. But we all know that uh, all of these use cases are then adopted and enhanced by some customer-specific requests and, and variants. And there is also the case that for all of these use cases, there is a contractual relationship with all who are involved in the collaboration uh, available as a baseline. And what we have seen in the last decades uh, via Supply and Platform, for all of the use cases, both of the business partners who collaborate, they agree and jointly use the same solution for collaboration. Like example, supply and document management or supply on supply chain collaboration. In order to ensure the quality of the processes and the quality of the community, we at Supply on are convinced that for those use cases, it is the best way to build a community based on invitation only. And this is the reason why today Supply on is a closed community. But this is also something that will change as soon as we talk about ESG use cases, because they require, as we already heard today, a multi-tier involvement. Here we have the expectation that it is relevant and that necessary data is even probably provided by the business partners from the slower supply chains, even without a specific invitation or a specific request. In order to establish something like this in a broad and global scale, it is necessary that we completely rely on standard processes and, of course, on standard formats of the data to be exchanged within the supply chain. And a huge difference in comparison to the single-tier scenarios will also be that there is only a contractual relationship between the respective upper and lower level, but not, of course, throughout the whole supply chain. And we also expect that it will be the case that each business partner will choose his software tool for his own management of these mainly ESG topics. Therefore, as we said, to make this available in a global and broad scale, it is necessary to open up these ecosystems of tools and landscapes, e.g. by self-registration. And, of course, as already said, that the information exchange needs to be done in standard formats. This is also necessary to make this happen. So, what does this mean to the way you know the supply on platform? So, I would like to point out three major changes and general enhancements that are necessary to enable our existing supply on platform for the multi-tier use cases. As Stefan just mentioned, already mentioned in his, use, in his keynote, it will, we will support in future several ways how new business partners will get part and can join the supply and community by self-registration, either based on a hint from a customer or based on a hint of an own supplier or even based on information which was done for the whole branch. And for all of the suppliers like you who are already registered on the supplier platform, you are already well prepared and will be able to reuse your existing account to interact in these use cases. In addition, 
we will also enhance our user, your user accounts to receive ESG information from your suppliers. You will be able to add and manage your own data regarding these topics and you will be able to provide the relevant information to your customers. As mentioned, all with just one single account. And of course, the standard data formats and the possibility to change the relevant information with your business partners and with the tools that your business partners have respectively chosen via standard interfaces. This will also be part of what all of the supplier and ESG tools will be able to do. Several of these already mentioned enhancements are already in development and we are happy to put that into production and into your usage soon. Thanks for your interest and have a nice ongoing very session. Much. <coughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. As well, very, very informative and I think a very, very clear and strong signal to our community that we want to broaden the ecosystem. Because to emphasize it a bit, a supplier out of you told me four weeks ago that he has been in a conference where it was told that the number of portals and marketplaces will double from now on until 2025. And therefore, it is an essential thing what we do right now in order to avoid exactly these things. And therefore, thank you very much once more for this intention, for the presentation. It was great. Thanks. Thank you. And I would like to hand over to an old acquaintance of me. <laughs> It's a friend, to be honest. <laughs> And he is already here for the second time. And do you know we have a, bir <coughs> a birthday this year? A second one. You can't imagine why I tell you. Two years ago, we started with our first community event. And you may uh, guess how many uh, participants we had in the first one. It was May 2021. 100, 200, something? No. Unfortunately, even less. It has been 35. So a big applause to all of you. Today we have 1,200 registrations. So amazing. But enough from me. Florian, please give us and our audience an update on the Catena X. Yeah, thanks, Mario. This is really nice that I am able to be here. Yeah, um, before we start with Catena X, um, and I tell you something about Catena X, we are really curious, um, what uh, have you ever heard about Catena X? So is what are you familiar with Catena X? So we have a survey which already started in parallel, and um, yeah, we are really wondering... I'm already looking to Mario because he will show me the results. Let me see who heard about it. Um, how many? So let's wait another second. So in um, yeah, about 20% heard about it in general, and um, but also um, 70% about it did not hear it, uh, something at all about Katina X. So Katina X is an initiative started. Um, about um, two years ago in the automotive industry to uh, connect all companies in the um, automotive industry and to make um, applications interoperable. So let's have a look here in the um, supply chain. In the supply chain, um, a lot of companies are working together, obviously, um, but they also need to share data and um, they need to share more and more data, for example, for carb product carbon footprint, circular economy or supply security. And in order to share this data, it's important that systems work together. But um, if um, each company has a different system, then we have the issue that uh, the data chains are not working and we have all this broken. Um, there's no automatic data exchange. And this is the thing Catena X um, would like to change because the applications and systems will be made interoperable between um, different um, software vendors. So each company can decide which is their most favorable system. And this is then Catena X compatible and um, interoperable with other systems. <laughs> so <coughs> we come to this vision. Um, it is pretty true that this kind of vision is um, coming up um, because these um, different systems can work interoperable. And then we have a network of networks as um, Stefan already um, introduced in the very beginning um, that different applications and networks can work together. So all uh, ecosystems are then um, working together and interrelated. 
two weeks ago on the Hannover Messe, a big um, industry fair, Katina X opens its first operation, so it's still in a beta environment, but um, it's there to use. And with the network of network approach, it's possible for you, for all our customers, to use Katina X via supply on. So if you are interested and it's relevant for you, please get in touch with me. Um, the email address um, is here on the slide and um, will also be in the chat. So please send me an email and then we can see what we can make uh, for you because um, for this beta operations, it's already possible to participate in Katina X. On my list from here are a lot of, um, of you from last year. So we, I still know that um, there's already a big interest from your side. And um, I have already a mailing list um, and um, will enhance the, or extend this list with your additional um, participants. And um, when you are interested, let me know on the email address katina-x at supplyon.com. Let me explain briefly what we are doing in um, Katina X. There are three um, ways how to integrate the supply on platform, the supply on ecosystem with Katina X. The first one is a portal to portal integration. So it's possible that you log in with your normal credentials on the supply on platform in the end, the end you end up in Katina X and can use applications from Katina X directly with your um, credentials um, from supply and so this is part of the integration. A second possibility will be we will have a certified data exchange and we have three applications and the three applications we explained to you today. This was a CO2, a PCF, this was Brynja and Tim. Then um, traceability we heard from Daniel and demand and capacity management from Michael. So all these applications you are, some of you are already familiar with will be enhanced that the data can be exchanged with participants not only in the supply on ecosystem but also inside Katina X. So it's really possible to receive and to share data with much more um, uh, business partners as um, you have only in the supply on ecosystem. All the certification that it is possible is planned uh, still for this year. So in the second half of this year, um, we probably are ready that this is working. But already today, some um, things are working. So if you are interested, let us know at the provided email address. And the third way here is yeah, integration of other systems. So um, in this case, it's possible to use also applications with which supply and does not have for a given pro business process, but um, to use applications um, from Katina X directly or um, all other applications which are interested, interesting for you, we can integrate into our ecosystem or in the Katina X ecosystem. So you have a real single access via supply on to Katina X. Yeah, and having said this, let me come to a final poll here. So just let us know, will Katina X be relevant for your company? And um, the poll is up. Yes, um, with multiple customers is one answer. Then yes, but only with one customer. Um, I don't know or no. So let me see, Mario. I'm already wondering. So we are waiting a little waiting. bit. Waiting. Yeah, have, we should wait a, more, a bit more. <laughs> we have a little time delay and therefore okay. we, we still wait. But, the but there are so are many votes already here. But let's uh, wait another second. Um, And by the way, you can see the results as well. You can follow it. And it seems to show a tendency that approximately 65% say, I don't know. 22% say yes with multiple customers. Only 8% say no, it's not a topic of us. And 6% uh, say yes, but only with one customer. Okay. Yeah, great. Really good to know from your side. Thanks a lot. And thank you very much from my side to you. Always as brilliant as, uh, and, and you used the monitor. Perfect. So very interactive. <laughs> Congratulations on this one. Okay. And see you the next time, because in Germany we say uh, all good things are three times. Right? Okay. <laughs> Then okay. See you next time. Bye. Thank you very much. And now we will come to the last topic of today. You have seen already a few clear and strong signals 
that we want to involve you. Yeah, two times you got asked if you want to participate somehow in interviews or whatever. Put your email address in the chat. Uh, Florian repeated this message again. Uh, the whole story of today is about your involvement. And another thing how we want to do something for you is what Regina will uh, bring you in the next three, four minutes, something like this. Okay. The bird is yours. Thank you, my dear. Wow. I just need to recap what we heard. So it is a huge change in supply on. As you heard from Thomas, we are open up the systems. It's a huge change. It's about our future. It's about climate. It's about this one world. Mm, I'm very much impressed. Coming back to the topic I should talk to is the supplier community. Yes, as, as you heard, Mario and I, we are the founders and we're very proud to celebrate for that baby the, the second anniversary. And we are always thinking how to improve. And we're always asking you to fill out the survey. Hey, it's worth doing that later on. Um, filling out the survey again because within the surveys we received so far you really liked most tips and tricks and we thought how can we bring that to you on a more regular basis and we in we implemented and invented the new event that's what I wanted to say the supply on in short 45 minute tips and tricks for one application For example, yesterday I delivered that session to, again, 1,200 people related to the topic DMS. And what I, have, what I show here on the slide is the forum. Remember, if you download the handout, you will find how to activate the forum for you. And it's worth going into the forum because we invented, together with Yona, you know him, the master of the forum, we invented the Supplier Academy. And within the Supplier Academy, you find all through the dates. So here I have planned already up to September. Every month you will see me. Be curious. One fine day you will see Supply On in shorts. No, that's the running joke internally. Um, you will see me. I will talk about a topic. And I always have the honor that I'm accompanied by the related product owner. So that's a real good opportunity for you. Activate the forum. And in the forum, we also have the section feedback. And give us your ideas if we can improve. So I just repeat it again. All the guys have asked you today, send in your email, help us, give us your feedback. You have the possibility to shape the future. Take that possibility. If you are a long-term supplier, you know in the past you didn't have that possibility. Mario, do we want to come to an end? We should so, because we want to keep in time. But it is, yeah. Two minutes enough. left. Two minutes left. It's enough. Before I would like to ask all the presenters on stage again, uh, I would like to address four key messages for requests to you. Please download the PDF and uh, forward it to your colleagues. The same you can do, and this is what we ask you to do in order to inform your management, for example, because today it was a more strategic and a future uh, event. Forward the information you have seen, forward the recording to your management, because it is a topic which is really, really important, and it is a question of our heart. And then furthermore, Regina already mentioned it, take the time, two minutes in the end, to answer the survey, because it helps us how to optimize uh, uh, coming events and what to take in. Yeah, please do so. It, you would do a great favor to us. So, and now I would like to ask all the presenters, very, very good presentations you have provided to our audience. Please come over. Thank you very much for this strong support. It was a big, big pleasure to have all of you with us. And it was a big, big pleasure to have all of you, dear audience. Enjoy the day here in Munich. It is a beautiful, sunny day. Hopefully it is in your town as well. Enjoy the rest of the day. We did a good start. Thank you very much. <laughs>